Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and in this video we're continuing on in the M5 Stick V series. There seems to have been a little bit of confusion in the last video about the FPIOA or Field Programmable Input Output Array. Now of course we have our physical pins on a board where everything is soldered to but with the FPIOA we can map those pins to a whole bunch of pins on the chip itself. If we look at the data sheet here we can see that the Kendrite chip is a BGA type and we have a huge list here of all the functions of each of those pins and what they can be used for. Now in the last video we used the pin definitions such as LED underscore G for the green LED. But we can also directly use the pin number. Here on SIPEED's GitHub we can see each of the pin definitions and their respective pins for the M5 stick V. So let's have a go at programming the green LED directly using its pin number number 9. I'll open the terminal again in Mike's Pi and then we'll import all of the necessary modules for dealing with the GPIOs. We use fm.register, then the pin number, and then the number of the internal pin that we want to map it to. Next we set it to an output, which automatically turns it on. And now we can toggle it on and off by changing its value. Let's also demonstrate that with the button. We can see here that button A is pin 36. So let's go ahead and register pin 36 to one of the internal GPIOs. And then we'll create an instance of it. And make sure we set it to in. And also it's necessary that we set it to a pull up. Bear in mind that not all of the internal pins of the K210 are input and output. Some are input only or output only. Now we can import the LCD module so that we can show the value of the button on the screen. Next we create a short while loop to display that value making sure that we convert it to a string. And there we have it. I hope that cleared up a bit more about the FPIOA. Next we're going to look at the draw functions of the LCD. First we'll import LCD and also image. The LCD module itself seems to have limited functionality. Most of the draw commands seem to be inside the image module. So we'll create an instance of the image module. First up, we'll draw a rectangle to the screen. As expected, first it accepts an X and Y origin, but then instead of an X and Y endpoint, it accepts a width and height parameter. Then we can set the color and also the thickness of the line. There doesn't seem to be any command for filling any of the shapes. Now we've set the parameters to display it each time we need to input lcd.display and then the name of the instance. There we can see the rectangle, although it's not orange. So some of these color definitions seem to be a bit off. I'll show you various ways where we can set the colors. We'll have an experimentation with those. Next up we're going to draw a circle. First we add the x and y origin at the center of the circle and then the radius, followed by color and thickness. I just realized I messed up there. I shouldn't be using LCD. I should be using image.draw. So we'll add that back in there. And then call the lcd.display function again. And there we go. Now we have a nice red circle. So the color is actually correct this time. Moving on, let's try another of the draw commands. We can see what's available by hitting the tab button. Let's draw an ellipse next. Here we add the X and Y origin 
but this time instead of radius we add in a width and height value and then the color we'll try green and a thickness of 2 display it again okay the uh, color didn't seem to work there again but at least it displayed next up we'll draw a cross you may have seen in my previous video where there was the find green program which made lots of crosses appear over any area that's recognized as green simple here only XY coordinates color and thickness okay we just have two more commands left to try now draw line which accepts an XY origin and an XY endpoint color and thickness and there we have it it's a nice green now as expected so it seems like the RGB color value is the most reliable here next up we'll draw an arrow which again just like the line accepts an XY origin and an XY endpoint and there we have it a decidedly non yellow arrow one last draw function I'd like to show you with the LCD draw string we weren't able to set the size of the text but if we use image dot draw string then we have the extra parameter scale where we can set the size of the text oops I just missed the other quotation mark there so go back and put it in and there we have it nice big pixelated but big and clear text okay now let's move on and look at accessing the Grove port of the stick V so if we look at the documentation page of stick V we can see that the GPIO of the Grove are 35 and 34 so first I'm just going to hook a small LED up to those ports and see if we can get it to turn on and off again we import the necessary modules set up the port set it as an output and then we can toggle the LED on and off with LED.value so that seems to be working nicely with the LED plugged into ground and the port 34 which is the outer port on the Grove which should generally be colored white okay I have a nice little PWM program here for fading the LED which I've also uploaded the Python program to my github so that was easy enough I then tried some of the units which accept digital input such as the PIR and that seemed to be working fine too I messed around a while with some of the analog inputs such as the angle sensor only to find after a bit of research that it seems that the K210 is incapable of analog input Oh well, I guess that's why Sipid added the ESP32 onto their Mike's Duino board. Well, what about I2C then? Here I set up an I2C scanning program and I connect the ENV unit. When I run it, you can see on the screen the addresses of the ENV's BMP280 and DHT12. So then I added the libraries of those two sensors onto the SD card. By default, the SD card is mounted into the flash system, so I can import those modules with ease. When I set up an instance of the DHT12, though, we start to see some problems here. When I use the measure function of the DHT12, I get some errors. And then if I try and use the temperature and humidity functions of the module I just end up getting some dud values I tried also with the BMP280 to make sure it wasn't an issue with my ENV unit but I wasn't even able to create an instance of the BMP280 without causing some errors I'm not sure what the issue is here 
and it seems as though the K210 should be capable of I2C input, but perhaps I need to do a little bit more research. That's all from me today. Hope you found this video useful. Perhaps you might be aware of what I'm doing wrong with the I2C devices. If so, leave a comment. If you have any questions, also leave a comment. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.